So this is a beat baseball. It's a one pound Chicago style softball. So in it, it has a pin that's kind of suppressing the speaker and at the bottom you have your speaker here. This is what they sound like. Everything we've been taught about the game of baseball has been see the ball, hit the ball, look the ball and see your glove. I'm doing this now coaching my son for T-ball. So when I heard about beat ball, I was fascinated. Beatball is an adaptive version of baseball for players who are visually impaired. Since there are varying degrees of visual ability, almost everyone is required to wear a blindfold. Although the sport was designed to be played without relying on sight, a few positions, like the pitcher, require it. Your pitcher does not want to strike anybody out. It's the opposite. Because in beatball, the pitcher and batter are on the same team. The most challenging part is getting right to where their bat is and them getting down my cadence. Ready, set, hit. The batters have to keep their swings consistent, but it's the pitcher's job to get the ball where that bat's hanging. When the ball is put into play, they'll run to a padded first or third base, which makes a buzzing sound. They're kind of these tall foam, I call them like tackling dummy looking things. So it's completely random. You'll either go to first base or third base. There's a specialized umpire that's flipping that switch but they need to make it to that base before the blindfolded fielders are able to retrieve the ball. Now, at this point, those who haven't played beat ball might think the game is starting to sound a little dangerous. After all, fielders are running, sliding, and diving to catch a ball they cannot see. Before the runner makes it to a base, they can't see. Well, we wear pads, you can't see them, but I have pads on. Uh, it is a contact sport, uh, sometimes. I've never seen anybody get hurt playing the game. I'll put that one out there. Working together through verbal communication and the guidance of two-sided spotters, the players defending the field stick to their zones to avoid collisions. But those pads still come in handy when diving for the ball or base. A lot of teamwork involved. Uh, communication is a big part of it, but playing a sport with your ears, it's, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> Which means the audience has to adapt too. We kind of have to teach people when the ball's hit into play, the crowd's supposed to be silent, your teammates are supposed to be silent while the play is going on, so the, the fielders can field the ball, the, the runners can hear the bases. After the play's over, chew your head off. Though the rules might be different, beat ball inspires just as much devotion, trash talk, and satisfaction as the game it was adapted from. One of my friends asked me to come out and sub in, I subbed in and I never left. I became a pitcher, started my own team. I've been doing it every year since then. It doesn't get any better than, you know, like laying out for a ball and stopping it, and getting somebody out. I think that's the best feeling. It's intimidating to be in the field, completely blindfolded, not knowing what's around you. And it's so much fun. After an inning or two, that fear goes away. And now you're just like, all right, I want to get the ball. All of a sudden you make contact and it's just a rush of adrenaline and you hear the bass buzz and you just run for it. Put everything into it, it's nothing like it. And until 1964, there was nothing like it. The first beeping softball was invented by telephone engineer Charlie Fairbanks in an effort to include people with visual impairments in recreational sports. The first beep baseball World Series tournament was held in 1975 and in 1976, the National Beat Baseball Association was formed in Chicago. In St. Louis, Mind's Eye Radio has been hosting recreational beatball tournaments as a fundraiser for the past 11 years. Mind's Eye, they've been around since the mid-70s. They were called the Radio Readers Network, and they had a body of volunteers that would read local publications, some national, and produce a radio station for a print-impaired audience. So we read newspapers, magazines, books, grocery store ads. Mind's Eye also offers audio description services at sporting events, the zoo, and other St. Louis attractions. We go into theaters and museums and provide um, description of visual elements of productions and exhibits. We have such a rich and great arts and culture scene here in the St. Louis area. It's part of the experience in this, this community, so we want to make sure everybody can enjoy the experience fully. And of course, in a town like St. Louis, the same goes for baseball. The 
there's not a whole lot of team sports that somebody with visual impairments play, and that's something that the Mind's Eye can give back to people. Mind's Eye creates awareness around visual impairment and the sport by providing beat ball demos at schools and businesses to people of all abilities. I think it's bringing notoriety to the hard work that the, the people without sight do, and it's also allowing the people with sight to know what they go through. Due to the growing number of players who wanted to compete nationally, Mind's Eye launched the Gateway Archers in 2020. My goal is to keep this team completely homegrown, where it's St. Louis players, people who live in this region, playing for the Gateway Archers. Against teams from Indianapolis, Boston, all the way as far as Argentina or Taiwan. I'm really you know, shooting for the stars. I, I expect uh, excellence. I expect that we're going to uh, represent St. Louis well. Team captain Chad Dillon had ties to beat ball long before playing it. When I was 16 years old, I was in the Boy Scouts and working on my Eagle Scout project, I was presented the opportunity to build the bases that we used. And I built 24 sets of bases uh, that we shipped all over the world. At 16, I didn't know that I had a degenerative eye disease. I didn't know that I was going to go blind. Later in my 20s, I found out that I was going to lose my vision and I, I started playing ball uh, almost as soon as I became legally blind. I'm really proud of, of what I did, obviously to earn my, my rank of Eagle Scout, but I'm, I'm as proud of, of what we've been able to do with this team. Many of the Gateway Archers have played in the World Series tournaments for other teams and bring those years of experience with them this season. Mari Blumenthal was just 12 years old when she attended her first World Series with mom, Kim. She got to pitch to another girl who was young too, and this, this girl had never hit a ball that had been pitched to her. She had only hit a ball off of a tee, and the very first ball Mari pitched to her, she hit. So it was, that was very exciting. This will be my ninth World Series. Been on a few teams, I've been lucky enough to play second and third place. I haven't won the championship yet, so that's my next goal. As beat ball continues to grow in St. Louis, players of all abilities are encouraged to give it a try. With one disclaimer, once you start playing, you might never want to stop. Anyone with a visual impairment or if you have children with a visual impairment, um, I highly encourage you to come out and get involved. We realize for people that can't see or have never been able to see, you know, they may not have any concept of what it is to swing a bat. Don't be scared. <laughs> it's sure. really fun. It's fun and we're all here to help. We're pretty serious here and we want to win games, but, but you know, we're, we're all friends. You get to meet other people that are like you. You get to run and be free on a baseball field and experience winning and celebrating with your teammates. All the traditional benefits from competing in a team sport still apply here, you know. For Living St. Louis, I'm Kara Vanninger.